<clears throat> Hello, everyone. Shirin is here. Hello, Shirin. How are you? It's been a long time. <laughs> Hope all is well with you. Well, what is going on with my screen today? Let me turn that light on as well. Well, today our time is a little bit limited. I have to rush out to some appointment and as well, I have a dentist appointment. <laughs> so I'll be quick to, uh, today. We won't be going over more than one hour. We have Angela Milicic or Milicic, Cicela Meran 21, Belgrad, Slobodan is here. Oh, so you changed your uh, your screen uh, thumbnail. So how are you? Thank you very much. Good. Uh, Hater says, Hi, Meran, male 17, UK. I have a question about you, about me. Hmm. Have you ever been attracted to the same sex or is it just the HOCD thing? I don't understand. What, what do you mean? Or is it just HOCD? It's always HOCD when a heterosexual says, but it's normal to find another man attractive. There's nothing wrong with it. The fact that we have been duped to think that we should be dealing with conclusion and label of things that makes you feel this is an abnormal thing. I mean, you have no problem recognizing a beautiful horse or a dog. You don't go into conclusion of sexuality, oh, I'm interested in a horse. But you have no problem seeing it beautiful, calling it beautiful, look at the muscle, look at the but to look at the neck and you admire the beauty of it and the same thing with dog or handbag or car everything is okay but as soon as it gets to the same gender we have been told that that would have a label attached to it or a conclusion that thought is no is is not the same as any other thoughts suddenly because it's same gender then it's not a thought anymore it's a conclusion. That's the problem. Otherwise, yeah, I remember I was a kid. There was this friend of mine and, you know, we really liked each other. But it was at the childhood, at the age that you could like anything. You could like a rock. You could like a girl. You could like a boy as a friend because the emotion and energy was what was... Um, flowing into the mind of a human being you were not looking at things in one way or another you know so and when we were kids we didn't question it we liked the friend more than the other one we felt comfortable with him or with her and it didn't matter but when we start thinking about feelings and what is normal as a conclusion and a label as then the society had put on it then suddenly a normal thing of recognizing someone's good looks would interpret itself into being homosexual or gay because that was the connotation and attached label and conclusion to it. And these are the problems that then you start bamboos being bamboozled and start data hunting and going into it and then intrusive thought takes a hold of it, wants to protect you because its job is that, because it knows you're not that, you're heterosexual, but these thoughts seem to create a certain kind of a um, um, protection, protective behavior of the brain. And it goes nuts and goes into different tangents and then intrusive thoughts hardly stops until you learn about it and figure it out. So, Shirin says, I'm 32 from, from where, Shirin?
because I have a client with the same last name. And Hater says, I'm in this stalemate in HOCD where I almost don't get any thoughts and I still get thoughts. You almost don't get any thoughts and you still get thoughts. Are you trying to confuse me? You did a good job. <laughs> Jack is here. Hello, Mehran. He says, hello, Jack. How are you, Colonel? <laughs> and Angela Milicic says, I watched Dark Knight Rises when Christian Bale said, I'm not afraid. I'm angry. <laughs> okay. All right. Any message in there for me? <laughs> and Angela says, the same as me, I'm angry on groinal thoughts, impulses, emotions, on HOCD. Why? Why would you be angry? Have you not watched the video I put as groinal response? Watch that video and it will help you to understand. You could have a groinal response to a doorknob, but that doesn't make you dorosexual. <laughs> You could have a, um, you could have a, a rose <laughs> groin respond to, a, I don't know, a romantic table set in a restaurant or a, I don't know, red carpet uh, um, signifying some kind of a wedding or romantic or a, a event or maybe a Hollywood event. You could picture the beautiful women and all that or in your case, however, your you know, agenda is, I'm not sure. You didn't tell me. Remember, guys, we got to know protocol, like gender, age, and where you're tuning in from, so I will know who I'm talking to, what gender, and so on, and what age. Anyhow, um, and that setup of that, I don't know, Hollywood uh, Oscars night and whatnot could give an arousal because the brain associates all these events and things to sex. And sex, the concept of sex gives you the arousal. Not necessarily the thing that you could look at a horse and get arousal because you think, oh, it's shiny coat and, you know, round bum or you know, what muscle are you just like. It doesn't mean you're horsosexual. It just happens. So stop interpreting growing a response. So what? What's out there that you're supposed to be proving every day? Oh, I'm a man. I'm a heterosexual. Or oh, I'm this or I'm that. No, you just live. Simple. You are what you are. You'll never change. The thought comes and goes and just bamboozles you. Don't fall for that trap, that nonsense. Live your life. Alexander says, hello, Mehran, how are you? Hello, everyone, beautiful meeting here in this Education Minutes. Wonderful of you. Thank you for that. I'm glad that you could make it here. <clears throat> and Angela says, I would kill myself before touch another male penis but feeling like I wanted to I want to do it makes me angry as well <laughs> you know it's like you're on a very high location a building or a cliff and you look down and you feel like I want to jump I want to jump because the gravity and the point of your eyes focusing on down there could be pulling you down. But you know it's wrong for you. So you live not by the suggestion that is happening one way or another with, between your uh, thoughts and the falling or the eyes and 
looking at the ground that far down and the emotions that a the the um what is it the um adventurous nature to see what it is to fly or what it is to fall whatever the reason is that makes you want to jump and fall from that but your reasoning and intellect and your choices says no that's why you have a power to veto and choices so we live by our vetoes and choices not by thoughts and suggestions and ideas or images because these things are not the intellect they're brains production they're not intellect production and hence you're there as the boss as the judge to see which of these are thoughts are nonsense that you should not choose or follow and which one would be of any use for you to advance your life towards whatever it is that you set out to accomplish so you live by your choices and veto and that is when brain is not involved in vetoing and choices of whatever brain conjures up or suggests brain itself is not involved when you veto a suggestion of the brain when you look at the, my, my video that was pretty Italian accent when you look at the my, when you look at my <laughs> the video I've made <laughs> which is are you or the brain is the you in the study that Dr. Leibet has done one of the um, experiments that I have um, discussed uh, Dr. Spiri's experiment, Dr. Um, Penfield experiment, Dr. Owen's experiment, and Dr. Leibitz's experiment. In that video, you can see the experiment that he has done shows you clearly that the brain is not you, you're not brain, you're above the brain, and there are aspects of you that the brain can never reach because brain is not the intellect. The intellect is separate from the brain, and that is what you use in order to rule and guide your life, negotiate and navigate your life by vetoes and choices. And in vetoes and choices, brain is not involved. There is not an activity in the brain when you veto something that the brain has suggested or anything. But the brain is involved when the suggestion takes place, which it shows you in that, in that study, in that uh, video, in that experiment. I highly recommend you guys watch. It's a long video, but it's worthwhile to um, help you to see it scientifically, not just philosophically, scientifically, uh, that uh, neuroscience has proven in the modern times that um, what the role of the brain is and uh, what it does and what its shortcomings are and that brain cannot reach you and you're the intellect, not the brain, and how this whole experiment at... Um, uh, mm, what is it evolved and uh, unfolded as it's explained there so i'm going to put that here for you and that is there is the video that you might want to take a look this uh, was done based on the video that was done by Dr. Ignar, who was a neurosurgeon and had operated on the brain many, many times, and there are very interesting experiments in that um, video that I've explained. I hope that you guys will enjoy and share the knowledge. So, Angela, and this what you said, what the comment that you made, is basically has that same um, suggestion that you will deal with it through your vetoes and judgment and the choices, rather than thinking that the brain is you, so you're supposed to follow what the brain says. No, not at all. The brain is just another apparatus another organ you don't follow what your kidney says you don't follow what your i don't know ass says or intestine says you make choices and if they're gone rogue or they're gone malfunctioning you figure out how you help them and uh, correct them and bring them back to health and the same thing when our brain has malfunctions and disorder 
development, you got to figure out how to deal with it, how to understand it, and then how to ignore it and rewire it. And through neuroplasticity, you bring back that balance that was in the brain and is not functioning as well, which we've talked about it before about caudate nucleus, striatum, and prefrontal cortex, and the relationship between all, and the amygdala, the anxiety, and all these things we've talked about it. So you got to look at the videos and then find uh, what we, we, we're trying to share here. Nova says, hello, Miran. Hello, Nova. Mail 20 US. Thank you for that. Guillermo, Guillermo, Guillermo Terrell says, is it common to have HOCD content in dreams? Dreams, anything. You, you're thinking about something, you're thinking about something all day long. You're dealing with it. So obviously when you sleep, it's on top of the uh, hierarchy and it comes to mind when the brain is so quiet. So it surfaces what you've been thinking all day long. It's like anything else. You think about chess all day long, you're going to dream about chess like I used to do. <laughs> Alexander Orit says, how to reduce emotion of intrusive thoughts. We know that they have no reality, but mind affected by them how to reduce our attraction from them or cut off ties. Can you explain something, please? Well, intrusive thoughts, the emotion that sometimes is created because of the intrusive thought is not necessarily related to that particular thought because when an intrusive thought is created there is an association of that suggestion in the brain that takes it to somewhere that has got nothing to do with what you're actually being suggested by the brain for example if the brain suggests uh, that you want to you saw a same sex same gender person and suggest to you without any depth that, oh, that's a homosexual uh, interest. Well, it says that because it doesn't have an intellect, doesn't have a knowledge, but it has a powerful association capability to see that same gender, see muscle, see a look, good look, or same gender, and then everything that is sexually relevant in the world, the brain associates it with the concept of sex itself. And in your case, the concept of sex has a certain kind of a reaction in you, but that reaction has nothing to do with what actually is triggering it for the brain. It has to do with what triggers concept of sex for you, which is sex with women that is already ingrained in your gender. You're reacting to the concept of sex, but the trigger was the same gender and the brain, anything that has sexual relevance, associates it with the concept of sex and you react to it and you think you reacted to this particular same gender. No, you didn't. You could be looking at a horse's butt and you could have a, uh, a sexual um, arousal or sexual uh, um, intrusive thoughts about it because it has a sexual relevant and it associates with the concept of sex and then you have the reaction but you think, oh, I reacted because I wanted to, you know, make it with the horse and many other things that way. So watch the uh, the video I have on the groinal response, and that could kind of make it a little bit more clear for you. Ah, oh, that's a slow boat then. Oh, so oh, you change your screen name. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, that's right, that's right. The slow one, that's you. Now I know who you are. Okay, all right. Oh, 
How come you change your screen name then? And major paper says, new scenarios, okay? And Shirin says, I'm 32 from US, recently found out my ex-boyfriend of one and a half years, I guess that is. I hope your ex-boyfriend is not one and a half year old. <laughs> my ex-boyfriend of one and a half is engaged and soon be to be engaged is engaged and soon to be engaged or maybe engaged soon to be married and it still hurts a lot when i think about any recommendation or thoughts yeah don't think about it. how by thinking about what is reality for you and what you should be focusing on as long as you focus on what he's doing you wouldn't be focusing on what you are doing or you should be doing or you want to be doing as long as you're focusing on other people's life, you won't be focusing on your own life. So what I'm suggesting to look at the outside world and see there's a world out there. There are over 8 billion people. And out of this 8 billion people, there's one guy who's actually not faithful to you, has gone and gotten engaged, broken up with you, engaged with another woman, is about to marry, and you think that's the only path in life that could take you to experience this journey of life that you're fortunate to have, so to speak? Why would you think that this is the only chance or the only choice you have in life? There are 8 billion other possibilities. Just because you have had some kind of interaction with this guy, you think that's the only guy? Well, get off your butt and don't be lazy and meet other people. I know it's not easy to find and meet people these days, but nevertheless, it can happen. So understand that there's a world out there much bigger than this guy and what this guy could have offered or the little life that you've been focusing on it and made it as the entirety of the opportunities of the world to be all summed up in this guy's ass so lighten up there's a lot more out there and there's a lot more capabilities and opportunities that are out there for you to try to examine to explore if you limit yourself to this then you'll stay limited when you understand that this was just a fragment of the opportunities available in this in this life, then you understand, okay, this fragment didn't work out for me. One way or another, it didn't work out for me. So let me stay with the reality and actuality rather than staying in my memory and thinking, oh, this was something great. If it was something great, it wouldn't be breaking up. And if since it has broken up, that means it never was something great. Maybe it was at one time, but you guys changed as consciousness has changed. However, the reason is you're not together. That should be good enough reason for you to say, I don't want to be with someone who doesn't want to be with me. I don't want to be with someone who has broken up with me. I don't want to be in a relationship that is no longer working. And that's the real truth about it. And on that base, you focus forward and find something better, something nicer, something more compatible to you, something that you can be proud of it. And it would be mutual rather than you dream up about something about someone who is actually not. Because if he was, then you wouldn't be dreaming about it right now. So, move on from that and bring reality to your life. Jitender says, hi, Maren. Hi, Jitender. 26 from India. Hi there. Ater or Heter says, words such as boyfriend and husband still trigger me as I want a wife. Just don't worry about the connotations and meanings. Just focus on your vetoes and choices. Live with your choices, not with thoughts coming out of your brain. Brain has no intellect, has no mandate, is not your teacher, is not a deity, is not intelligence, is not smart. It's just another organ and does its job, which is making thoughts. That's all. Making thoughts and trying to think that it's protecting you by alarming of things that you're not interested but brings it to you and when it goes rogue it brings it more than is necessary and alarms you more than is necessary to the point that you think oh these alarms might mean something no it means nothing it means the brain is malfunctioning caught it nucleus is not working and simply you gotta understand that and take charge by your vetoes and choices rather than letting brain make suggestions and you think oh that suggestion means something no has no values. And 
Slobodan says he's from another phone. That's why my name is. Oh, I see. Okay. And the Ligani says, Hi, Mayor, I'm 24, May, London. How do you forget any chances of reconnecting with your ex? Should I act as if they are dead in my mind? Why do you have to act if they're dead? Just understand that that relationship didn't work. And why would I want to be in a relationship that didn't work? It had its chances. It didn't work. Now, okay, like anything else, if it's not working, I repair it. Or if it's not repairable, I move away and get another one. It's like, a, I don't know, car or a bicycle or something. It's yours, you take, you take care of it, breaks down, you try to fix it, you try again. If it doesn't, eventually you have to let it go. We understand it in any other shape or form, but we, we don't understand it when it comes to a relationship because you think part of your energy and the fact that she knows about you means a lot. No. You introduce yourself to another woman and she may actually understand you and know about you a lot better than this one. Just give them the same chance you give to this one and you will see. Otherwise, you'll be living in your memories and living in your dreams and living in your thoughts and that's no reality. That's just fooling yourself and not being kind to yourself. Life is short. Don't waste it like that. Major paper says, hello, Mayor, I'm 25, uh, France, is it France or female? I'm not sure. What does 25 FR means? Is it gender or is it the country? So how are you? You helped me a lot with HOCD, but it seems that every time it's calm, my brain is coming with new scenarios and ideas that scared the hell out of me. How do to teach brain to be calm and don't come up with these disgusting thoughts? Well, the problem is that you're constantly focusing on how do I get these thoughts out of my brain? Instead, you should be focusing on what is the mechanism of the brain and how it actually goes into this disorder and learn about the dysfunctioning brain and how it goes into the disorder loop and learn it as an apparatus rather than thinking oh it has the smarts I have to understand it it must have a certain kind of a um, intelligence in there certain kind of a um, point in there no the brain is stupid and it's gone rogue and malfunctioning and you got to focus on what are these malfunctioning is all about how the brain malfunctions what are the what are the explanations and the way to understand these malfunctionings of the signaling system of the brain when you focus on the apparatus and the equipment and to learn how it's put together how it can malfunction then you no longer are concerned about what it spits out and try to understand and make use or make sense out of what it spits out. Instead, you're focusing on the fact that the equipment that spits out these thoughts and these images and suggestions is broken, is malfunctioning. That's a malfunction production. It's a production of a malfunctioning equipment. Not that I have to understand what it means. No, you don't. It's what it is. A feces of brain. A malfunctioning result. This is a result of malfunctioning brain is all these intrusive thoughts. 
Everybody has intrusive thoughts. Everybody in the world has intrusive thoughts. There is no one who doesn't have intrusive thoughts. But there is a mechanism called caudate nucleus, which is part of the striatum, basal ganglia, that it's supposed to shut down the intrusive thoughts automatically once they appear. Haven't you seen before HOCD or any OCD or many people, this is how it works in people who are not malfunctioning or in ourselves when it wasn't uh, any malfunction happening. You would notice something disgusting and say, ooh, what that thought was, and then psh, gone. And you focus on what it is and it would be clear road. That's the job of the caudate nucleus to see the, see the intrusive thoughts and it sees that it's not in line with your values. It knows about your inner values and gender and everything else preferences, faith, and manners, morals, all the values, and automatically on that basis shuts down intrusive thoughts that are not in line with these values. But when caudate nucleus malfunctions, it doesn't do its job that it's designed to do automatically, then these thoughts linger. Not that they have any reality to them, but they linger. They don't dissipate because the system is broken. So what you do by understanding that this is an intrusive thought, calling it for what it is, that's OCD, that's not me. That's the brain thought, that's not me. And then you recognize and call it, label it for what it is, then you ignore it, go about your business. By doing this, every time it shows up, rather than focusing on what it means or what, what it always shouldn't be here and resist, that eventually gives a new behavior to the brain, rewires the brain, and neuroplasticity takes place, and you automatically, manually will do the job of the automatic uh, gear shift that was set to handle these things, caudate nucleus. And after a while, caudate nucleus clicks back in, and your knowledge helps it to get back on reset. And even if it doesn't, you already have had this arrangement and understanding that turns into automatic reaction to these intrusive thoughts that you handle them by passing them by, by ignoring them. So they fall by the wayside. That's how you deal with it. There's a lot more discussion on that, which you're always welcome to look at the videos that I've made in two separate uh, playlists, or you can um, go on my site, mindthatseekstruth.com, mindthatseekstruth.com. Make an appointment on Skype and we'll discuss it one-on-one -on, -one on Skype, what's concerning you, whether it's about your um, experiences such as this or whether it's about your emotional hardships or breakups and things that you're, that's concerning you. And of course, as always, uh, for new clients who make one-hour appointment, I will add another appointment so we'll have two hours at the first session uh, so we can... Uh, deal and explore what's concerning you one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. Jinder Kumar says, I can't think any hope. Is there a future after breakup? <laughs> the future starts after breakup, my friend. What are you talking about? Yeah, the whole world was hanging on to this one girl. The whole world stopped. Everybody wanted that one girl because that one girl is the angel of whole creation. Are you nuts? Are you nuts? Bring about understanding of the consciousness of this girl and your consciousness were not compatible. That takes nothing away from you and it just means that girl is not good enough for you. Simple. But you fully focus on her looks and body and all those images that you had created of yourself and your validity is based on her liking you or not. And who is she? What has she accomplished in life that her choosing you makes you elevated and her not choosing you makes you demoted? What the hell are you talking about? Who is she? What has she accomplished in this life? Nothing. She's another human being, needy of everything else that we all, we all are. So now that it's not working, you guys are compatible. 
Just understand it, move on with so many other wonderful choices and find what is compatible with you on consciousness level and then grow together. That's silly to sum up the whole experience of life to one girl or one relationship or whatever you're interested in. All right, major paper again. Uh, are you? I don't know your gender here. It says, hello, Maran, twenty-five. I'd say, France. I don't know if this, what else it could mean. How are you? You help me a lot with HOCD, but it seems that every time my my calm brain is coming with new sin up. But it seems that every time it's calm, my brain is coming with new scenarios and ideas that scare the hell out of me. Oh, how to teach me? I just talked about it, I guess. To be calm and don't come up with these disgusting... Th oh, I see. I just discussed it. It says my comment keeps getting deleted. Oh, really? I only see, I don't see anything deleted here from yours. I, I may just see that I've answered it and I pass by it because this redundance. She says, thank you, Mehran. Sorry for too many typos. No, it's okay. <laughs> All right. And user 22 says, hello, how are you, Mehran? Hello, user 22. Thank you. Sean Halloway says, our negative thoughts we have about ourselves are actually false. Negative thoughts, you live by your choices and vetoes. If you don't like them, they're false then. Simple. It's not your choice. It's not what you prefer. Yeah, they are. And don't be bamboozled by the brain. Brain is not intellect. It's just an organ of you. You're not supposed to be listening to it. You're supposed to be judging what it produces. Gaming Master says, with my HOCD, my mind makes me feel like I like my thought. Well, that's what the HOCD is. The brain is so powerful that can make you actually think that these thoughts are of interest to you because it keeps suggesting it. But you need to understand who is the thought that is actually looking at these suggestions. That's you. You're not the suggestions. You're not the thought. You're not the brain. You're the one who's actually looking from above what these suggestions are, and what the brain is doing, and you have the power to judge them. That's you. If you look at the video that I have that says, who's talking to God, then you'll understand the concept that where you are, who you are in this whole entity and where the brain is. And when you notice and understand that the brain wasn't even part of us 40,000 years ago, the way we know it, it was just a you know, uh, uh, stem brain and everything was instinctive until that. It was like animals would hunt and sleep and have sex and eat. And that was it. Everything was hardwired. Everything was clear. There was no ambiguity or confusion about anything, including your sexual orientation and whatnot, because there was no ability to think 40,000 years ago. 
once the ability to speak and thinking started, then these all these things also started because the brain had this capability of making thoughts. Otherwise, when we couldn't do these things, it was all balanced life. Every gender was clear and from the beginning and there was no intrusions of thoughts interfering with any ideas about you. You were you, purely you, and that was it. There was no suggestion. It's like you walked in the street right now and a bunch of people call you something that you're not. That's the role of the brain that started playing since 40,000 years ago. Before that, there was no other people outside calling you anything. Because they had no brain, it's like saying there was no other people out there when you walk in the street to say anything to you that is not complimentary to you and it's not about you, it's just something that you're not. The brain is doing the same thing. When it goes malfunctioning, it suggests things that is not you. But you got to treat it just like these other people are saying things about you. There are other people. They don't know anything about you. You shouldn't even be influenced by it, by what they say. Same thing with your brain. It's your brain. It's not you. So you shouldn't be influenced by what it conjures up. But since 40,000 years ago, we got this brain. And then the ability to think and um, speak has caused all these things that the brain now does and communicates in the form of thought to us. And we think, oh, that thought means it's me. No, you're not thoughts, and thought is not you, and you're not the brain, and brain is not you. And if you study or, or read uh, Dr. Schwartz's uh, book, Brain Lock, you understand more about it. Otherwise, watch the videos that I've put about it and uh, in that regards, and then uh, learn a thing or two. You will call them. You will. All right, guys, we've got another 15 minutes, then I gotta go. Well, it looks like we have no other questions and it's time for me to get on with the other appointments that I have so I won't be late. So at least I was here for you guys. Didn't uh, shortchange you. Um, so perhaps tonight at 9 p.m. we'll have another one for different time zones, Australia, New Zealand, Hong Kong, Middle Eastern areas and so on. And uh, if you guys are still up and about, you might as well, um, by all means, you're more than welcome to join. Otherwise. I look forward to talk to you tonight, if not next week. In the meantime, be good to yourself, to the others. And I love you all. And I thank you for being here and talk to you soon. Bye for now.